Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you some few tips that you can use when drawing hair or fur in pastels. Now for this I will always start with a good base layer and I talk about this in all of my YouTube videos. Now what I've done for this is I have taken a section of a Highland Cow tutorial that I've created on my Patreon channel and I'm going to focus on one section of the hair. Now the reason why I've chosen the body is because the hair here does go in many different directions so it's going to really enable me to focus on a few top tips for drawing that realistic fur and it's quite complex in the way that it moves. So I want to make sure that I'm always building up as much depth and realism as I can and it's going to vary and depend on the layers, the pencil technique and many different factors and of course that's what we're going to be covering in this tutorial. So my first top tip when working on a base layer is you want to make sure that you're paying really close attention to where your lights and your darks are. You'll notice that I do not just block in one solid colour, I'm paying really close attention to my reference photo and mapping it in as accurately as I can. So once I'm happy with my base layer, that's when I start moving on to my future layers. Now here this is where I'm relying on those lights and darks and you can see that I've already mapped in most of the body. I fast forwarded to this section of the body because this is where that hair changes in many directions and it's one of the more challenging parts of the entire portrait. So I'm really taking my time now with my pastel pencils to map in my main shapes. Now one of the common questions that I'm asked is what pastel pencils do I use? Now I like to use four main brands, they're the Carbofello, Pitt, Derwent and Carandash. Now because I do get quite a lot of questions asking about the supplies that I use, I do have a must have pastel supply list available on my Patreon channel for all Patreon members to download who are part of those pastel tiers. So there you'll have all of the colours that I use from a day to day basis, the tape that I use, the easel, my lighting, all of that is included in that downloadable document. Now if this tutorial of the Highland Cow or any of my other in-depth step-by-step tutorials are of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. So when I start working with the detailed layers, you can see I'm really taking my time to map in the way that that hair is changing direction. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it is my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels and I will link that in the description below if it's of interest. So in that video there are a few of the pencil tips and techniques that are going to really help to build up more of that realism in any hair or fur. Now the three main things that I talk about in all of my tutorials both in depth on Patreon and here on YouTube are the fur direction, the fur length and the fur thickness. This is really important and it was also applied when drawing people portraits so any kind of hair, any fur texture, those three things are really important. And they do come into consideration at the same time. So you can see here, this is all real time footage. I'm really curving that pencil stroke to get the direction of that hair right. I'm also applying the right amount of pressure so that I make sure that the line is the right thickness. And then of course, how long that pencil is maintained in contact with that surface that then determines how long that pencil stroke is. So all of those three things, when you're studying that reference photo with the specific hair or fur that you're drawing, will be taken into account all at the same time. Now because my Patreon tutorials are often all in real time, I can really explain just why it's important to move that pencil in a specific way. I do have a way of showing with a putty eraser how much pressure you should be applying to that pencil, depending on the type of texture and pencil stroke that we should be creating. Now as well as the pencil technique, I also talk about the importance of contrast. Now this is the case with all of my YouTube tutorials and I do focus on that more than the colour. So you can see here that the pencils that I'm using, although they are oranges, they've got some burnt ochre colours there, some pale yellows at some point, I'm always making sure that they are the right value. So I'm building up my layers gradually. I'm not jumping to my brightest highlights early on because if I do that, I'm gonna significantly limit the amount of depth that I can build up in this portrait. So the best way of looking at it is, is when you're studying that reference photo, 
if you were to put your hand on that animal, especially with a thicker, denser coat as this animal has here, your hand would disappear in that thicker fur. So we want to be drawing the hair, that fur that's closest to the skin, and building up from there. Now that would be the case with any sort of hair texture that is as dense as this. So you want to be making sure that you've got all of those layers of hair and fur built up before you get to those brightest details. Now in order to do that, I am working predominantly from dark to light. So if you're using a pastel pencil that you're confident is the right value in terms of how dark or bright it should be, but it isn't showing up how you would like, that's a good indication that your base layer is not dark enough. If you darken your base layer, your pastel pencils will then show up more easily and more vibrant on top, and you'll find then that as a result of that, you'll have far more depth built in your portrait. It's one of the most common mistakes that can happen is we don't make that base layer dark enough because we're worried that we're going to go too dark, but in the long run, we end up with a bit more of a flatter two-dimensional portrait. So before I move on to building up that detail in this fur, if this video has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I would be really grateful. And as I've mentioned earlier, if you are interested in any of my slower in-depth tutorials, I will link my Patreon in the description below. I do also have a Patreon library on my website, which lists all of the tutorials that I have available on Patreon as soon as you sign up. And the wonderful thing about Patreon is you can stay for as long as you like, or you can cancel at any time. It is very flexible. So into these detailed layers. Now when it comes to this, as I've mentioned, the most important thing that I am thinking of in my own mind is don't jump to those brightest highlights. I want to be building up all of that hair underneath. Now a huge tip, and I mention this in most of my tutorials, is you do want to work in small sections if you're ever feeling overwhelmed by any element that you're drawing. So for this section of the hair here, as I said earlier, it really does change in many different directions. So I don't want to focus on too much of a larger area and miss out an important directional change of that hair. And then I result again in less shape, more of a two dimensional and flatter portrait. So to make sure that I include every single bit of that, I'm going to work in small sections. I will work in one or two square inches and I will slowly piece the puzzle together. Now another big tip, when you are working on something where the hair changes direction like what it does here, is trust your reference photo. It is so easy for us to look at that photo and back at our drawing and our brain thinks we know what it should look like and we end up drawing pencil strokes that are not accurate to that reference photo. Now one way that you can overcome that is by turning your artwork upside down and your reference photo upside down and that will force your brain to see it as an abstract shape rather than hair or an ear, a hand, whatever it might be. So that's something that can really help. Now something else that is really important in any artwork and again this is something that I really do cover in all of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon is lighting. Now this will take us back to contrast, which I've already spoken about, but lighting, if you've got a strong one-sided light source, it's really important to make sure that you are replicating that. But here, the light source, I wanna make sure that when I start adding my highlighted layers, as I am here, I'm starting to select a few areas where some of those details are a little bit brighter. And you'll notice that I'm not putting them everywhere. This is so important. If we start putting our highlights in more of a solid layer over the entire subject or the entire section that we're working on, we will then change that light source and ultimately then make that section of the portrait flatter because we haven't followed the contrast. So usually when you're working with your brighter details, you'll find that you actually need to use less pencil strokes because you do not want to be covering up all of the layers that we've built up underneath. Otherwise, there would be no reason for us to be layering in the way that we have done here to build up the most depth that we possibly can. So I do hope that the tips and techniques that I've shared in this tutorial have been useful. If they were, as I said, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it does tell YouTube that it's of interest and they're likely to share it with more people. Now, if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. 
I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube in the next few days and if you would like to draw along to this tutorial the entire thing I do provide the reference photo line art and full material list to the Patreon version and it is a great one to draw along to if you are looking to really understand how to layer this type of complex hair and fur. So as always thank you so much for watching.